I had to hand cut each page, hole punch each page, hand bind each page of the book. And... Today on Time We Discuss, I have Molly with me. Molly, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So Molly, you and I are going to talk today about following Sasquatch, but for our listeners and viewers, don't get your hopes up. This is actually about a children's book, which I'm super excited about. So Molly, I, I want to start at the beginning of this uh, this particular book, um, in theory. Why, why following Sasquatch? Why is that the center of your focus for this children's book? I was out in Oregon um, leading a conservation corps, and which is, you know, you take kids out. Um, it's usually their first job. They're in high school, and um, you teach them how to build trails. You teach them about the wild, about survival, about all sorts of stuff, life. Um, and so one night we were uh, camping, just sitting around the fire talking, and something that we had learned that day were um, – leave no trace principles, which are like basically like a set of guidelines for how to live gently with the earth. Um, and so we were joking. And then all of a sudden we were like, Sasquatch is like the master of leave no trace since nobody can ever find Sasquatch. And it just kind of sat in my brain and in my body. And a couple years later, I just wrote it down and turned it into a little book. Oh, that's fun. Now that reminds me, is that, and I don't, I don't know if this is the same thing, uh, but it reminds me of the concept where it's like when out in nature, you want to leave things in the same way that you found it. Is that the same idea? Yeah, totally. Um, like leave things the way you found them or even better. Okay. So what, what turned you into writing children's books? Why is that something you always want to do since you were a kid or something that it was later in life? It was like, you know, I want to write a book. How did that, how did that happen for you? I never thought I would write a children's book. I guess um, a couple years prior to that, I was working at a bookstore, a used bookstore uh, out in Montana, and um, was like, oh my gosh, it would be so like, what a brilliant idea to write a children's book. You know, people love children's books. You would like make a ton of money. You'd sell all your copies. I never thought, I was just like, oh, that'd be cool. And then, um, anyway, it turns out you don't make a lot of money from writing a children's book. It's super hard. But what I loved about this project and what has inspired me to write more children's books is the combination of the words and the illustrations opens up this infinite realm of possibility. You can create universes that people then enter. And what's so magical about a picture book is the words and the illustrations are equal and you can, you know, you have two elements that you can use to create that universe rather than just one, whether it's a painting or like a chapter book. Something else that I love about children's books that um, I've kind of realized more as I'm working on the next couple ones is the sim it forces you to simplify your message, you know? So, um, because your audience is younger, because your pages, your page count is shorter, you, it like is a challenge for you to be like, okay, what am I actually trying to say and how can I say it in the most simple way? Many, many, many episodes ago, I spoke with another children's author, um, Aubrey Andrus. And um, one of the things we talked about was how she, you know, started working with a publishing company, then illustrator, editor, all of that good stuff. Now, from when we were talking before we started recording this, you were saying that you did your own illustrations, right? Yes. So let's talk about that process. What was it like? Was that just like one more headache for you? Was that something, I'm assuming you really enjoyed doing it, but let's talk about that aspect of it. I have always been drawing. So drawing, um, music, uh, dance, those were always part of my, you know, universe. Um, writing stories was not really part of it. Writing songs, they're a little different, um, but writing songs was a part of it. So I really enjoyed the illustrations. Um, that to me kind of like made the whole story just come alive. And I think the headache part was like, you know, the next steps, because as I mentioned earlier, I did self-publish before I found this publishing company or they found me or vice versa. Um, 
and that, you know, I was hand binding each one. I actually just found my first original hand bound copy, uh, which was kind of cool. It's all like scrappy together. I was trying to use ha a handmade paper. I was making my own paper. I was trying all these different things. So that was a bit of a headache. But the illustrations I love. I love drawing. It's interesting. It sounds like the, the whole, I'm going to call it a project for lack of better words, but that's the whole project was almost like a very art project. You know, it wasn't just the words, it wasn't just the story, um, but the image to go along with it. They had the hand bound cover, you know, talk about the, the type of paper you were choosing. That's uh, that's quite, <laughs> quite an endeavor. <laughs> a lot of thought went into it. It definitely was a multi-year process, but um, I think I learned so much about books, book making, paper, writing, the influence you can have. And it it also just made me even more connected with this story and the moments when I didn't think I could continue, you know, publishing this, whether I was just losing tons of money or um just not, you know, finding the audience and I'd meet somebody who would be like, I love your book so much and that would inspire me to, you know, just keep going and trying and finally made it happen. <laughs> Molly, I want to I want to hang on the the book the physical book creation process. There I've spoken to quite a few um self-published authors and um they have a similar story in that they they went to Amazon. They went through the Amazon process. Um they might be an ebook version or you know you buy the, the I guess um Amazon can make a hard copy version for you that they can sell on demand essentially. But let's talk about the physical the physical part of it. Um, as a self-published author, how did you then um, essentially uh, get that out to people, ship that out? You just you took orders through a website and then you hand you dropped it in the mail for people. Let's talk about that process because that is greatly different than I'm, what I'm imagining the Amazon process would be. So I am pretty much a nomad. I I, I don't even have a car. I just live on the road. Um, there's a lot of places that I'm that feel like a home, but I don't really have like a space. Because I travel all the time, I would keep a couple of copies and I would just, you know, walk in the stores. Um, I had a little website. I did a couple fairs kind of all around the country and um, yeah, just sold copies. If people ordered more then yeah, I would generally, I would print, um, when I started, I would print 20. Um, and I had to hand cut each page, hole punch each page, hand bind each page and book and, um, definitely a time consuming process, but yeah. And then I would pop it in the mail. I would wrap it up all nice with a little bow and so yeah, the quality of the book, I think, is very different from a hand-bound copy to, like, a copy printed on Amazon. But, you know, it's also not super sustainable to if you're trying to do anything else other than bind books. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's running out of time. So let's let's compare that to the distribution that's going to happen with your new publishing company. Um, are they? Is uh, I'm assuming the cover is going to be vastly different. Or the, <laughs> um, I'm yeah. assuming there's going to be probably electronic versions available. What what are you getting through the new publisher? Well, they've taken you know uh, the headache of the printing away from me, and um, that's very nice. It opens up my time, and um, the distribution is going to be so much easier. Uh, you know, the quality of the book is quite different. It's not hand bound, but I think it's more durable. It's better for, you know, kids, you know, sticky fingers and stuff like that. It's become, it's more of a book and a little less of like a, uh, an, an item or a project or, you know, um, and also just, I'm so lucky to have this publishing company because they, you know, picked this story up and believed in me. I reached out to so many publishing companies. It's so hard as for children's authors and illustrators um, to find a publishing company is really difficult because a lot of publishing companies either want to use their own writers or their own illustrators. So if you're both and you don't want to compromise the thing that you created, then um, it, it's challenging because there's just not a lot of, uh, I had a hard time finding companies that wanted both, you know, artist, uh, writer. Um, and so now finding this company and 
just marketing. I'm terrible at marketing. I'm not good at it. I don't like it. <laughs> so I don't have to do that really much anymore, which is nice. And, but really just getting it out to more people than, you know, my network is the biggest plus. Uh, it's not about anything other than just sharing this story with the world, really, for me, you know. I, I've spoken to several people, um, including a police chief, um, a, an animal chiropractor, um, a, a woman that does her own oyster farming. Um, oh, and cool. by the time your video goes live, these will be just shortly behind yours. And, and when I was speaking to this person, I wish I remembered who it was, um, but we talked about that topic that, that you just said, you know, and it was, you know, by, by having the ability to inspire other people. And I said, you know, if, and they, they were talking about my podcast, and I said, you know, if I, if I inspire just one person, if I change just one person's life, then, you know, that, that's good enough for me. That's a success for me. And it sounds like you have a very, very similar outlook, which is really, really cool. Absolutely. I know. It's really, I mean, it's not about anything else. It's funny. I was just, it's kind of the same, a little bit different, but I was just going for a walk and thinking like how important it is to not lose hope in the world and like those, you know, inspiring and hope and it's uh they're so important to just like hold close to you um, that is so, so true yeah. that is so true <laughs> So let's talk about your education background. One of the things I like to do um, when, when it comes to different people's careers, I, I want to see if people are looking to change careers, uh, what might have obstacles they might encounter that might actually hold them back. So I'm curious, from a writing perspective, um, how has your education, we'll say your formal education, um, contributed to your writing and, and the art that goes with it? Has it had a major effect, not effect? What was it like for you? Well, I uh, have always been interested in art. So in high school, um, went to public high school in Maryland and uh, really kind of dove into the art classes, took as many art classes as I could. And then never really into writing. I always felt like I was a bad writer, actually. Um, but I always wrote journals, songs, poems. When I was little, I would write, you know, stories with my friends, plays, but that's not formal education, I guess. <laughs> um, and then in college, I uh, didn't really know what I wanted to study. I was interested in environmental science, um, but I ended up majoring in French and in art. Um, and so continued my drawing. Um, Again, the writing was not really part of it. I just wrote a bunch of songs. I suppose my education has uh, helped with my drawing and my art, but um, the writing has always just been kind of on my own on the side. Many, many, many episodes ago, it's probably like episode six or seven or something like that, I was speaking with another author, um, Kristen Williams, and um, she was also a self-published author. And um, I said to her, you know, at what point did you look at yourself and say, I am an author? Like, when was that that turning point for you where you sort of started to identify as being an author? I don't think I've made it there yet. <laughs> I know when you were like, so you're an author. I was like, uh, I guess I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I consider myself more of just an artist because I feel like I think there are authors that wouldn't. I don't think I'm quite on that level yet, you know. I wrote and illustrated this book, but I really think to be an author, you have to be truly, like, dedicated to the craft of storytelling and story writing. And my storytelling is so infused with songs. I would call myself even a, a singer, songwriter before calling myself an author. It's so funny. I'm, I'm doing all these name drops today. Um, so I spoke <laughs> with... Um... Alex, Alex Beaumont, I believe was her name, um, also an author, a fantasy author, and um, I actually spoke to her fairly recently, but her podcast is going to, actually from, from the present time, is going to come out relatively soon, within the next few weeks. Um, I moved her, it doesn't matter why I moved it around. But at any rate, um, <laughs> she, she had very strong... Um, I'll, I'll say insights for lack of better words, comparing um, music and and literature and how intertwined they can be and how how they um, they uh, accentuate each other, I guess. Um, so it's, it's very interesting that you also bring up music and writing um, in, in the not so, there's not a lot of time that separates the two as far as when I was actually speaking to you. So that's kind of interesting and neat. 
Are you currently working on another book now that you have secured a publisher for your first? What's that looking like for you? This past year, I was um, illustrating a book for this Wolverine biologist, Rick Yates. Uh, I think he did most of his work in Glacier National Park, um, which is like primo habitat for wolverines. So that one is a chapter book, but also a children's book. So the illustrations for that one are quite different. They're you know, we work together on making everything very anatomically correct, um, you know, an accurate representation of wolverines, the wildlife in Glacier National Park, the flora, the fauna, all of it. Um, and so that was a very exciting project and um, neat for me to learn so much about wolverines from drawing them and learning their movements and their you know, jaws when they open, they peel back, you can see all their teeth. Anyway, um, but that's, uh, this publishing company also picked up that book. Uh, that one's called Clara and the Snow Line. As far as another book, I am working on two. One is called The Kid Who Learned to Fly. The other one is doesn't have a title yet. One thing I like to do when I'm speaking with someone, I like to give them the opportunity to talk about um, a project they're working on, a cause they believe in, um, their business. Um, so if there's something specific you'd like to talk about, if you want to talk more about your books, um, I'd like to hand the floor over to you for another minute or two. I'm working on partnering with a couple um, nonprofits, uh, the Wilderness Watch in Montana. We're going to be donating a portion of the proceeds to some books to them. Um, and this cool company called the great old broads for wilderness again we're kind of partnering with them um looking at different i'm actually looking for even more opportunities i would love to really just in my wildest dreams for this book i would love to partner with these different companies across the country and maybe even the world and kind of figure out how to donate some proceeds to these companies that just you know, promote either environmental education or, um, you know, some kind of conservation programs or some kind of um, advocates for, for wilderness spaces or, um, I mean, even like trail crew company or trail crew organizations, uh, because that's kind of where the story was born. That's perfect. Yeah. So I'll make sure I get um, any relevant links that you send me. I'll make sure I put them on the website. I'll put them in the show notes so people can easily find all those things when they're looking for them. Molly, okay. it's been absolutely awesome having you on Time We Discuss and we learned what it's like to be a children's author of following Sasquatch. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This has been fun.